Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion on how to start, own, and manage your own engineering firm. My guest today is Rick DeLaGuardia. He is the president and founder of DLG Engineering, a building envelope consulting firm that specializes in hurricane and flood mitigation design and analysis. Thanks for being here, Rick. Thank you for having me. Do you believe an entrepreneur is born or made? Uh, I, th I think they're made. You, could be, you can be made because uh, the leadership skills that you need um, to be an entrepreneur, you have to be, I think, raised with. I don't think you can just be, become honest from one day to the next. Mm -hmm. I think those are the skills that have to be developed in your childhood. You have to be instilled uh, leadership qualities, honesty, dependability. Uh, so I think it, it can be made, but it's uh, um, the traits uh, start early on in life. So if, if you don't have those skills, it'll be harder. All right, those are important skills, but I think with entrepreneurs, isn't there kind of a spark, an ability to take a kind of a big risk on yourself? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I kind of wonder if that aspect is, is an innate thing. Yeah, taking risks, is, that, that's a big part of entrepreneurship. Um, I mean, you don't start your own company. You don't leave a company that you've been working for 14 years without taking risks. It's a financial risk. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, a, a career risk. Uh, but that's how the great entrepreneurs uh, um, work. I mean, they take risk, and without the risk, there may not be that reward. Okay, so you're going to dive into business. What are the key steps you should take before starting your own business? The, the, the first step is obviously be informed. You, you have to know what you're getting yourself into, and that's what my book writes about. It, my book does a really good job starting you from as a high school student, mm -hmm. uh, um, college student all the way to when you start your own company. So there's so many things to, to learn and, and things that I, I wasn't aware of. Um, that's something that I wish I had a resource to turn to at the time, but so many legal implications, some insurance implications uh, that you really need to be, financial implications that you really need to be aware of. So becoming informed is um, one of the most important things. Uh, and, and then after being informed, you have to understand that you need to find a specialty. That's my recommendation. Uh, find a specialty or niche that uh, will make you an expert in the field and it will insulate you from a poor economy. That's how I was able to survive when the uh, downturn of the economy is I had a specialty. I was an, considered an expert. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have to understand your financial means. Uh, uh, you have to see what your expenses are, what your income is. Uh, understand your net worth, uh, getting all your, your uh, assets and, and, and subtracting your liabilities from them, that's your net worth. Uh, can you find a way to fund uh, your startup company? Uh, because it will be difficult. Uh, then you have to um, develop a support team because without the spouse that's supportive, without a team that can advise you, a mentor uh, possibly, it becomes hard. Uh, it, being an entrepreneur is not easy, it, and it's not for everyone. It's a mindset. You really have to, to live that mindset, and, um, and you have to have a team around you. And then finally, you, you have to um, learn to uh, what the expectations are. So I would recommend that you incorporate your company several years before, uh, because most uh, banks uh, won't lend uh, or give credit to a startup. They want at least three years of uh, credit history. So if you incorporate... Um, Start your own, your, your company, develop a bank account, get a couple of charge cards, uh, start developing a credit history for your company, and that will get you going when you're ready to start. Um, you can just, you can have an automatic credit. So it's very important to have good credit and to, um, to incorporate prior to opening your company. How would your advice differ to a young engineer who wants to start their own company versus an engineer who's, say, in their 50s and wants to start a company? Yeah, um, well, you have, um, a reciprocal uh, issues there because a young engineer is going to have uh, a lot of time but maybe not that much experience whereas an older engineer in their 50s I started my company in my 40s uh, is going to have probably a lot of experience but not that much time to develop their careers uh, and become an expert so it's a matter of, of understanding using your strengths so the young engineers utilize th that time that you have to invest in your 401k to invest wisely uh, as a, an older engineer, you're going to utilize your experience and your contacts and, and your connections. Hopefully you've developed the following and, and so you have paid your dues already. Rick, thank you for joining me today for this compelling discussion on entrepreneurship. For more information on ASC's Interchange program, go to ASCE.org slash interchange. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange.